People come under attack for all kinds of reasons. Sometimes they come under attack in their finances, in their marriage, in their children, and in their health. And when people come under attack in their health, they have to decide what they're going to do. They can just give up and be sick, or they can choose to fight and get well. You do not have to be sick. You can apply the promises of God's Word. You can do whatever you have to do to regain your physical victory. But you don't have to be sick for the rest of your life. You can maintain your health and even get stronger if you'll do what God says to do and use your head. And that is what I'm going to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner. This is the end of the week. And today we're going to wrap up our series called What to Do When You're Being Bombarded. But I want to say thank you for spending this time with me and letting me come right into your space. Jesus promised where two or three of you are gathered together in my name, I will be there in the midst of you. He never said we had to be in the same room. He just said we had to be gathered together. And today I'm gathered together with you. And Jesus promises that he is here with us today. And Lord, today we ask that you speak to us and strengthen us, especially about what to do when our health is being bombarded. In Jesus' name, amen. And by the way, if you feel that you're under any kind of attack and you need someone to pray for you right now, call us right now. We're waiting to receive your call or for your email to show up in our inbox. And the moment we hear from you, we will pray in faith. It's important that you know how to pray. It's not enough just to cry out. You've got to cry out to God in faith because faith is what God responds to. And if you'll let us know how to pray for you, we will begin to release our faith for God to move mightily in your life and God really will move mightily. But we need to know how to pray. So give us a call or send us your email. And today is the last day that we're offering you our brand new series called What to Do When You're Being Bombarded. It is a marvelous series filled with faith. It will really help you know how to repel the enemy's attacks. And it comes with a study guide. And again, today is the last day that we're offering this on the program. And you can order these right now by going online or by giving us a call. And we're also offering you right now my book, which has become a Christian classic. What an honor that so many people have read this book all over the world. And I'm talking about the book, Dressed to Kill. The full subtitle says, you don't have to take it anymore because you are dressed to kill. You're dressed with a whole weaponry of God my friends, and when you have that weaponry, you have the upper hand, you can put the enemy on the run. And the rest of the subtitle says, A Biblical Approach to Spiritual Warfare and Armor. And this book has wonderful illustrations that literally shows you what this Roman weaponry looked like and why God used these particular pieces of weaponry to describe our spiritual weaponry. And if you don't have a copy of Dress to Kill, you need to order yours today. And we're also offering you right now at a radical discount, our brand new autobiography called Unlikely, A Faith-Filled Journey to the Ends of the Earth. And there's Denise and me seated on Red Square, which is right near where we live. This really is our home. It is so unlikely that a boy from Sand Springs, Oklahoma, and a girl from Miami, Oklahoma, would end up leading a large ministry from the heart of Moscow, Russia, and from here, taking the teaching of the Bible to the whole earth. That is so unlikely. I know that you know that is unlikely. But God loves to do unlikely things. And he wants to do some unlikely things in your life too. He wants to give you an adventure of a lifetime. And that's why I want you to read this book. It's filled with teaching and it will really encourage your own faith. And please remember that when you become a partner with our ministry, we're going to send you two books as our way of saying, welcome to our partner family. We're going to send you my book called Life in the Combat Zone, which is dedicated to partners. And we're going to send you Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness, which is very powerful. We send these two books to anyone 
who becomes a partner with our ministry. But hey, reach for your Bible. And today we're going to return to 2 Timothy chapter 1. We always use the Bible in this program and we're believing for a revival of the Bible in the church. But let's go back to 2 Timothy chapter 1, and today we're going to begin in verse 11, where Paul is describing his ministry. And actually in verse 9 and 10, he was talking about the glorious gospel that we believe and that we preach. Then in response to the gospel, he says in 2 Timothy 1.11, Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. Paul says, whereunto, unto this great and glorious gospel, I'm appointed a preacher. I'm appointed an apostle. I'm appointed a teacher of the Gentiles. He's really glorifying and magnifying his calling. And then in verse 12, he says, for the which cause I also suffer these things. The equivalent of saying, if you want to know I'm having all the trouble that I'm having, it is because I've been appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles because of this. For this very reason, I am suffering all these things. And that word suffer is the Greek word pasco. The word pasco, pasco literally means I suffer, but it depicts a physical suffering, even an emotional kind of suffering. And as I've told you, at this particular moment, the Apostle Paul was in prison in the city of Rome, not imprisoned as a Christian, but as a criminal. People are saying horrible things about him all over the city of Rome. Fake news is out. And the fake news is this man needs to stay in prison or this man needs to die. Everyone is speaking bad news about Paul. And there he is in prison. He can't even speak a word to defend himself. And Paul says, for the which cause I suffer these things because of the call on my life. The devil's after my call. The devil is trying to stop the advancements that I'm making. This is what has triggered this attack. And, but then he adds, nevertheless, I am not ashamed. And that word ashamed means to be disgraced, to be put to shame, to be embarrassed. And it is actually the Greek word for one so embarrassed that his face is flushed. Now he is red faced. Paul literally says, I'm not disgraced. I'm not embarrassed. I'm not put to shame. My face is not flushed and red due to embarrassment. You know why? He knew who he was. Do you know who you are? You have to understand that in life, people have all kinds of opinions about you. They're going to say all kinds of things about you. It is important for you to know who you are. And Paul knew who he was. He knew what he had done. He knew what he had not done. And in spite of what everybody was saying about him, he says, I am not disgraced and I am not ashamed. I'm not embarrassed. And then he adds, for I know whom I have believed. Not only does he know who he is, he knows whom he has believed. And when he says, I know, in Greek it is the word oida, which describes knowledge gained by experience. He's had enough experience with God to know God is in control. And my friends, I want to tell you, this is the wonderful thing about walking longer and longer with the Lord. You gain more and more and more experience with the Lord, and it gives you confidence about the one whom you have believed. And Paul says, I know whom I have believed. The word believed here really means the one that I have trusted. And I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. And as I've told you, the word persuaded is the Greek word patho. Ah, this is so powerful. And I'm going to read to you directly from my notes. This word patho, here translated persuaded, is really the Greek word for persuasion, but it depicts one that is convinced, one that is coaxed. He's been coaxed into a certain way of thinking. One that is swayed from one opinion to the opinion held by another. A person coaxed from a particular conviction to embrace a new conviction, a persuasion that leads to conviction and belief, absolute confidence, convinced to the core, rock solid certainty. And the use of this word tells me Paul had to be coaxed. He had to be swayed from one thought to another thought. Well, think about it. There he is in prison. 
He cannot speak a word to defend himself. He is in a Roman prison. Most prisoners never left a Roman prison. And in fact, because most prisoners died in prison, they weren't even given food to eat because they were considered to be useless eaters. So now Paul is deep, deep, deep inside a Roman prison all by himself. And I'm certain he's tempted to have some really negative thoughts. But rather than give way to his own thoughts and just listen to himself, he begins to speak to himself. And I want to tell you again, there's a time when you need to quit listening to yourself and quit listening to all of your thoughts that are fear-filled, and you need to start speaking to yourself. And Paul has spoken to himself and spoken to himself and spoken to himself and talked himself into a position of of faith. Your ears believe what they hear. And if you speak faith, you will believe what you hear. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And when you begin to speak faith and speak faith and speak faith and speak faith, your mind, your soul will grab hold of it. And Paul now has coaxed himself. He's persuaded himself to a point of faith until now it is rock solid. He's convinced to the core that God is able. The word able, the Greek word dunatas, which really depicts one that is powerful, one that possesses ability, one that is capable or competent. He says God has power. He's got strength. He's got ability. He's capable. He is competent to do what? To keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. And the word keep is a translation of a form of the Greek word phuloso. Listen to this. The word phuloso again means to save, to protect, to preserve, or to guard. If we were to stop right there, Paul says, I am certain God is competent. He is able to save me, to protect me, to preserve me, to guard me. But there's more. Because this word keep, the Greek word philosophy, indeed is the word for a military guard who shows uninterrupted vigilance in watching over a piece of property or territory, or it could be used to describe a shepherd who shows uninterrupted vigilance to watch over the sheep assigned to him. And by using this word, Paul says God is competent. God is capable to save me, to protect me, to preserve me, to guard me. He's like my mighty warrior. I'm the territory that has been assigned to him. I'm his. And therefore, with uninterrupted vigilance, he's watching over me. And because I'm a sheep, the great shepherd is watching over me. That is what Paul is saying in this verse. And my friends, you can claim it. It's true of you too. And he goes on to say he's able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. And I've told you the word committed is a Greek word, parathiki. And this word is so powerful. The word para means to come alongside. The word thiki is from tithemi. It means to place or to deposit. It pictures coming alongside of something where you can make a deposit or entrust something into safekeeping. And again, when I was a boy, Every other Thursday night, my dad went to the bank. I saw him do it every other week the whole time that I was growing up. And he would take his check to the bank and he would open the lever, the door to the depository box. Para, he came alongside of that box and Thiki or Tithemi, he put the cash in, closed the door. And once the door was closed, it was safe. It was in a place of safekeeping. No one could steal it. No one could retrieve it, including him. He couldn't even take his own money out because now it was sealed in that depository box. And in the same way, Paul says, when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, para, I pulled up alongside of the Lord and Tithemi. I put myself into him and now I am in Christ. I can't even retrieve myself from that position. I am locked in the person of Christ. No one can touch me. I'm safe there. And that's true of you too. And he says, he will keep that which I have committed or deposited into him against that day. He's going to keep me until I see him. Say amen. Well, one thing that we need to commit to the Lord is our health. And while we believe for our health to be strong, we also need to take action to make sure that we stay strong. We need to eat right. We need to 
physically exercise. We need to use our mind, not just believe, but also use our mind and do what is necessary to maintain our good health. A lot of people have bad health because they did wrong things. My friends, let's use our mind, let's do our part, and then let's trust the Lord to do His part. But what do you do when there's an attack on your health? Well, let me give you a scripture. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 25, where the Apostle Paul is writing, and he says, Yet I supposed it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, and notice how he describes Epaphroditus. My brother and companion in labor, my fellow soldier, but your messenger, and he that ministers to my wants. That is so precious because Paul was ministering to people all the time, but this Epaphroditus was one who ministered to Paul and not just to Paul, but to his wants. Here was somebody who was helping Paul. That's why Paul loved this man so much. And then he adds in verse 26, for he longed after you all and was full of heaviness, talking about Epaphroditus, because you heard that he had been sick. Here was a faithful believer and listen to his status. He was a brother. He was a companion in labor. He was a fellow soldier and he was a messenger. And this word messenger in Greek is the word apostolos. It's where we get the word for an apostle, which means this Epaphroditus stood in an apostolic position. But in spite of the fact that he was a brother, a companion in labor, a fellow soldier, and even stood in apostolic ministry, he got sick, which means sometimes our health is bombarded. It doesn't matter what your status is. And the word sick here is pretty profound because it is the Greek word astheneo, and listen to what it means. It depicts a person who is frail in health or people so physically weak that they were unable to travel. It carries the idea of those who were feeble, fragile, faint, incapacitated, disabled, or simply in such poor health that it would be unthinkable to transport them and therefore they were shut-ins or they were homebound. And it's interesting that this same word sick can also be translated to be in financial need. And I think that's important because when you've been stricken in your physical health, it affects your finances. You can't work. You're spending money on medication. You're spending money on medical bills. It is a major attack of the enemy, not only against your body, but against your financial status, your social status. And here the Apostle Paul says that Epaphroditus had been sick. And when you come to verse 27, it tells us how sick. Listen to this. For indeed, he was sick nigh unto death. Look at those words, nigh unto, a compound word, the Greek word paraplesion from the word para, which means alongside, and the Greek word plesion, which means to be like a neighbor or to live next door to someone. But when you put the two words together, it forms the word paraplesion. It means to live right next door to or to live right alongside of. Or in this particular case, Epaphroditus was so sick, he was living right near, Paul says, death. And the word death here, the Greek word thanatos, it describes a dangerous circumstance, mortal danger or physical death. This man was so bombarded in his health, a man that was vital, a man that was important, a man that was doing everything right, and he came under assault and was living right in the shadow of death. That's how critically ill he was. But the verse goes on to say, but God had mercy on him. Say mercy. The word mercy is the Greek word elios, which describes pity. It describes compassion, but compassion always has action. It's never just pity. Compassion always has action. This Greek word elios depicts a deep-seated and unsettling emotion that a person feels in response to something he's seen or heard. It is a heart-wrenching emotion. Listen, that compels one to action, which means God didn't just say, oh, poor Epaphroditus. God was moved to take action on his behalf. And my friend, I want to tell you that if God sees that you are suffering physically and that your health is under bombardment, God wants to take action to move on your behalf. His compassion always results in action. But you've got to release your faith and you have to cooperate with that compassion. You've got to take it 
by faith. And that's why we read back in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 14, that good thing. We're talking about your health. Jesus died for you to be well. That's why I want you to order my series, which is called, Do You Want to Be Healed? If you don't have this, you should order this series. And there's another series I've done that is marvelous. It's 15 parts called The Miracles of Jesus Christ. If you listen to these two series, it will really build your faith and let you know that God wants to heal you. But this verse says, the good thing that was committed to thee, the word committed is again the Greek word parathiki. Just like you committed your life into Christ, there are things that God has committed to you and you are to keep them. It is our responsibility to use our faith to keep what belongs to us. And something that belongs to us is health, healing. It belongs to us. And we've got to keep it by the Holy Ghost that dwells in us. First of all, we need to understand that God doesn't want to leave us in our situation. He wants to release his compassion toward us. And my friend, if you're suffering in your health and you feel your health is being bombarded, I release the compassion of God to you right now. That compassion comes with action. God will release his delivering and healing power to you. And you've got to keep it by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is in you. And he will empower you to receive it, to maintain it, and to walk in it. Wow, this has been so good. But we're out of time. I'll be back in just a moment, and I want to pray for you. What triggers a spiritual attack against your life? I'm talking about difficult moments when it seems like some area of your life has come under a full assault from the enemy. But what exactly triggers these spiritual attacks? And what exactly can you do to repel them with the power of God? In this practical and helpful five-part series, What to Do When You're Being Bombarded, Rick Renner will give you the needed weapons and strategies for repelling every attack. I'm talking about attacks against your finances, attacks against your marriage, attacks against your children or grandchildren, attacks against your health. You'll be so thankful you took time to digest this powerful five-part series that is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $10. In addition, we are also offering you the 500-page book, Dress to Kill. In this book, Rick answers questions about the often misunderstood subject of spiritual warfare and gives insight into the purpose of spiritual armor in the lives of believers. This comprehensive study on spiritual warfare teaches you how to put on the full armor of God and the importance each piece of the armor plays in defeating the enemy. This beautifully bound book, which includes a full-color insert of illustrations depicting every piece of armor the Roman soldier war in battle can be yours for just $22. Don't miss this special offer, the series What to Do When You're Being Bombarded and the book Dress to Kill. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. This is Rick Renner, and I'm here on the side of our new studio with Mr. Joel Renner. It is so good to be with you. Joel, it was exciting what happened here yesterday. It really is. They poured so much concrete. They poured this entire slab yesterday from morning to evening, and on this slab, Joel, we're going to begin constructing our new studio. In fact, the walls are going to go up in just a few weeks, and we're able to do it because of our giving team that's giving of their finances to help us do that. And right from this place, we're gonna produce teaching that people can trust and send it all over the world in the English language and the Russian language. And it's just so exciting. And what's totally amazing to me, Joel, is that at the same time that we're doing this here, we are purchasing a new building in Tulsa. And Joel, just this morning, I was reading in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 11, where God promised, I'm going to give you houses that you didn't build that will be fully supplied when you get them. And the new building that we're getting in Tulsa, it is fully furnished. It's amazing. It is everything we would ever need. And we didn't have to lift a finger. We just have to walk in and take possession of it. And believe. And believe. We need to pay for it. And that's why we want to say thank you to you giving team, because you really are making a difference. And here in Moscow and in Tulsa and around the world, our ministry is literally bursting at the seams. People reaching out to us, calling us, 
writing to us, asking us for materials. If you saw our office in Tulsa, you would be amazed because materials are lining the hallways. We're using metal containers on the back of the property because we don't have room for more materials in the building. We're literally bursting at the seams because God is giving increase. You know, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, one plants, another waters, but God is the one who gives the increase. And I want to say thank you for your planting, thank you for your giving, and thank you to God because God is ultimately the one who gives the increase. That if you're not already a part of our giving team, would you please pray about becoming part of the giving team to help us finish constructing this studio and purchasing the building in Tulsa? We'll be so thankful. And together as partners, we're going to reach people with teaching they can trust. It's amazing that right from where each of us are, we can make a difference in someone else's life. So thank you in advance for being a part of this wonderful ministry expansion project. Today we've been talking about what to do when your health is under a bombardment. And my friends, I want you to understand that the compassion of God is moving on your behalf. It is headed in your direction right now. Compassion results in action. And God wants to release his healing power to get you back into good physical shape. But you've got to take it by faith. And I want you to order the whole series. Oh, this series has been so rich. And today is the last day that we're offering it on the program. And the series is called What to Do When You're Being Bombarded. It happens to everybody from time to time. This is five parts. It comes in multiple formats and it comes with a great study guide. Together, you will just eat these up. You can read it while you hear it or see it and really get this teaching down deep inside you. And we're also offering you right now my book, which is called Dress to Kill, the full title, You Don't Have to Take It Anymore Because You Are Dressed to Kill. My friends, you have everything you need in Christ to put the enemy on the run. And please remember that if you need somebody to pray with you right now, call us. We're waiting to hear from you or send us your email. And the moment we get it, we're going to be able to release our faith for God to really move mightily in your life. But Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that your healing and delivering power is available to every one of my friends that feels their health is being bombarded. Or Lord, maybe it is one of their loved ones or a friend that they're near to. I speak healing to you in the name of Jesus. I speak the delivering power of God to you in the name of Jesus. Jesus took all of that sickness on his own body on the cross so you can be free. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, it's been good. I'll see you Monday. But until then, remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Thank you for joining Rick Renner today. For more information about Rick Renner Ministries and product resources, visit renner.org and connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.